cold press versus expeller press versus solvent extracted. Hello, Facebook Live and YouTube, however you're checking this out. Uh, I'm in Nashville right now, just got uh, done two days masterminding with uh, a lot of other restaurant owners, some really awesome restaurant owners that are, are some dear friends now. Um, so I had a comment today on Facebook about oil. Uh, we've been doing a lot on cooking oil. It's really amazing the vast array of oils that a restaurant can have access to, all different levels, all different price quality, all different prices, all different qualities, um, same sunflower oil, which seems to be the same sunflower oil, it could be drastically different, same with olive oil. So I had a comment about what is cold pressed oil. So let's talk about cold press versus expeller press versus solvent extracted. So most oil, that uh, most oil, now let's exclude olive oil. Let's talk about uh, soybean oil. Let's talk about sunflower oil. Now we use a sunflower oil at the restaurant to cook with, a sunflower oil that is actually cold pressed. We don't like to advertise it as expeller pressed, even though cold pressed and expeller pressed could mean the same thing, they could not mean the same thing. So basically, when you take a nut or a seed, you have to take this and basically pulverize it. So it pulverizes, chops up, and then you have to start a centrifuge or an ext extraction process where they extract the oil through a filter, maybe centrifuge it, get all the particles out. So it goes through basically, like, let's picture a meat grinder. And you're putting meat in the meat grinder and it's getting forced into these smaller chopped pieces and then, then getting extruded through the end piece, the dye, which is all the little holes. So if you were to put sunflower seeds in there or soybeans, well, you would start getting that mash at the end. Well, as it goes through, in an expeller press in a, in a, where they're physically manually extracting it like that through a machine, mechanically extracting it, that mechanism can heat up drastically so it becomes hot. Just because something's expeller press doesn't mean it's cold pressed. Now, so just so I can simplify this, every oil that is expeller pressed, I'm sorry, every cold pressed oil is also expeller pressed, so it goes through this mechanism. Some of these mechanisms are now upgraded or altered or or designed to not to get the oil hot. So after this mash goes through, this grinder-like experience, it gets pushed through another filter, it gets centrifuged, and you have the oil that runs off. But now you have this mash that's there. Picture sunflowers, you have this sunflower mash. So now you can heat this up if it already hasn't been heated to begin with, with the mechanisms. Just because running a mechanism in a machine, if you make juice at home and you run your machine and you're juicing a lot of things, you notice that juice will sometimes get warm, gets warm, it'll get warm coming out because the mechanism, the machine itself is just heating up. So in an expeller, in a cold pressed operation, they're keeping the temperature at 110 degrees lower. Our sunflower oil, I don't think goes past 110 degrees. We've actually been at the place that does our sunflower oil. It's really a neat process. It's actually pressed on demand. So I call up on Monday and I say, hey, I need two tubs of sunflower oil this week and they'll cold press it that week, package it and then ship it to us. Uh, on Friday. It's an awesome process instead of oil just sitting out and being in a warehouse or something like that, which usually usually what happens with oil. Uh, it does cost more money, but it's so well worth it and it's so fresh and the sunflower taste on it is incredible. So back to the mash that goes through this this extruder, this, this mechanism, this expeller press, can get heated up from the actual um, device that it's going through, or the producer can say, you know what, we want to extract more oil out of this. So how do you extract more oil? You heat it up. You heat it up to a high temperature, which will allow some more of the oil to run off and fall off, and they centrifuge it and get, get a lot of stuff out of there. Now the next step after that is, the producer might say, okay, we have this mash now. So picture sunflower seeds going through, whole hull and everything. You have a wet mash that has oil in it. You have a drier mash because they heated it up so it's not as, not as wet, but there's still something in there that the, that the producer wants to get out of that oil. So what does that producer do? They add hexane gas, petroleum hexane gas, to, to uh, extract this by the solvent, which will now allow everything to come out of this mash, or this sunflower mash, or soybean oil mash, or whatever they're using, canola. It causes everything to get out of that mash. Well, the consequence is it has hexane gas in it. 
So what do you have to do with the hexane gas is, you have to now uh, heat it up to a really high heat. Um, it's gonna turn the oil a funky flavor, an off color. It's gonna, it's gonna manipulate that oil to where if you went to buy an oil that had the hexane gas and then it was high heated, you're gonna be like, oh, this oil's terrible. So what does the producer have to do? They actually have to deodorize it, bleach it, degum it. There's a whole seven step process that they can do to oil, including, including hydrogenate it which a lot of people are very conscious now about trans fats, but a lot of restaurants and especially bakeries still use it. A ton of bakeries in New York still use hydrogenated uh, trans fats. They're still buying the tubs of it. I've seen this personally happen. Um, so always ask when you go to a bakery, are you using real butter or are you using some type of hydrogenated vegetable margarine? So again, three steps. You're taking sunflower seeds or whatever, whatever you're pressing, you're putting in a mechanism. The mechanism could heat up and it's an expeller press mechanism. If you're keeping it cold, you can call it cold pressed. If you're, you're not gonna control the heat and it's gonna go up, then it's an expeller press. And after all that is extracted manually, or physically, physically I should say, then they can throw solvents on it. So when you go to buy oil, especially to cook with, my suggestion is you cook with sunflower oil. The Hudson Valley has a great sunflower oil producer. You can find it in Adams Farragher Markets, um, maybe some other local places, farmer's markets have it. It's called Hudson Valley Cold Pressed. Their oil is so fresh and so pure. I've actually seen it, I've been there. They're great people where it's basically just sunflower seeds going into a machine that's doing it, doing it so low and carefully that it's not altering the heat. The heat doesn't get past 110 degrees. And the oil comes out, it's black at this point because it has the sunflower shell part particles in it. So then you have to actually press it through this filter to get all those pieces out. And that's what goes into the bottle, folks. It's like you take a sip of this and it's like, I taste sunflowers. It wasn't deodorized, it wasn't bleached, it wasn't degummed, it wasn't heated to 500 degrees. There was no hexane gas added to it whatsoever. So here's the progression when you go to a store, you wanna look for cold press first, expeller press is the second best. If it doesn't say cold, pressed or expeller pressed, totally avoid it because you have to assume that that oil, there's been hexane gas added to that oil. And then going through those seven seven steps, including degumming, deodorizing, bleaching, uh, heating to an excessive, excessive point, maybe even doing some other funky things, defractionating it. So those are the basics. Cold pressed oil is the way to go. I will do a video on olive oil. Um, olive oil is, a, is basically fruit juice. It's an amazing, amazing uh, oil. Uh, and that too is expeller or basically mechanically expressed. Basically, they're doing it hydraulically with new machinery or the old way by doing it, putting it through uh, those stone wheels and grinding it. There's a lot of different things to, to consider with olive oil. And a lot of this olive oil, folks, it's impossible to buy good olive oil at 20 bucks a gallon or 30 bucks a gallon. If you want high quality, extra virgin, true, real, unadulterated olive oil, you have to spend about 20 bucks to 30 bucks a liter, okay? Don't go to the store and buy a gallon in some container and saying, oh wow, is this, you know, is this great oil? And you paid 20 bucks or 25 bucks a gallon. It doesn't work like that. That oil is adulterated. They've taken it and they've basically gone through the same process that I just described, where they'll press the olives the first time through a physical extraction process, whether it's um, through a stone wheel, like which what they used to do, and some olive oil farms still do this, olive oil producers still do this. Um, or you can get it where it's done by machine, but then they have all this olive mash or pomace left. So it's a ton of olive stuff. So the greedy guys are gonna say, well, how do we get more of this olive oil out of this pomace? So they make a pomace oil by adding a solvents and then heating it, deodorizing it, gumming it, and do all that same stuff. And then they add it back to extra virgin olive oil and they kind of dilute it a little bit and then they put it on the store shelves as extra virgin or virgin olive oil and you have no idea folks. It is impossible to buy good olive oil without spending good money. It's totally extra virgin that is. It's totally impossible. It defeats the law of business. Um, you get what you pay for when it comes to olive oil. Splurge, get the stuff in small bottles. Don't buy too much, open one small bottle at a time. Olive oil is a very fascinating oil, but it's a highly, highly abused oil. Use it as quick as you can. Keep it in a dark, cool place, away from the sunlight. Uh, keep, keep it tightly sealed. And I have some more videos on olive oil. And I'm gonna do a lot more on olive oil because people just don't know 
olive oil to its maximum potential or even know how to shop for olive oil. And there's different times you can buy uh, oil from the southern hemisphere versus from the northern hemisphere because there are seasons. Uh, Australia and Chile are the most strict when it comes to processing. Italy, it's really, really abused. In fact, some fun facts here on olive oil. Apulia, which is the, which is the gateway to olive oil. It the, has the most olive oil trees, I think, per, per capita in Italy. There's 60 million olive trees in Apulia. That's the heel of the boot, folks. In fact, my family's from there. My grandmother and grandfather came there uh, years ago, almost 180, 90 years ago, from uh, just outside of Bari, from Faisano. So in that part of Italy, there's 60 million olive trees. 